Buckle your seatbelt. It's time for another episode of the Prepper Recon Podcast. I've personally been buying gold and silver from JM Bullion for over two years. They offer the best prices over spot that I can find, and I've never had a problem with an order. If you're looking to trade in some of your fiat paper for real money, check out jmbullion.com today. Ready-Made Resources is a trusted name in the Prepper community because they've been around for 18 years. They offer great prices on night vision, water filtration, long-term storage food, solar energy components, and provide free technical service. Get ready for an uncertain future at readymaderesources.com. Hey, Preppers and Patriots. This is the second half of my interview with Tim Young of selfsufficientman.com. Enjoy the show. And I think uh, an EMP is a threat, but I think it's a less likely threat than a job loss or a other personal financial crisis. W- would you agree on that? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I know um, I don't remember the list, but when I wrote Start Prepping, I, I listed the 23 or 26 most likely disasters that you're going to face. And uh, and I listed them, actually, I, I, I courageously listed them in order of likelihood. I mean, like, I would even know that, right? Because, you know, who knows what the likelihood is. But I said, look, you're likely to face a job loss. You're likely to face a death in the family. You're likely to face a disaster. That's a disaster only for you. It's not going to be, you know, a, um, a, a made-for-TV disaster, most likely. It's most likely going to be, you know, a fire in your house um, or a tornado hits your house and two others, but nothing else. And then you have a disaster. And, you know, maybe you think insurance is a solution for that. But in many cases, as a flood right now, we're finding out, you know, that's not the case. So um, yeah, I think that you've got to prepare for your own personal disasters first. And then if these widespread things happen, I mean, then, yeah, you need to do what you can to be prepared for that. But we don't, we're not doomsday preppers at all. We don't, doomsday preppers to me are people who really believe that an EMP is imminent. They really believe that financial collapse is imminent. And, you know, I may have opinions about, you know, our the stability of our financial system and the stability of our political system and all those things, but they're just opinions. It doesn't really matter whether I'm right or wrong. The, the important question for me is, do I want to take the risk that those things, it, that life will continue the way it is? And no, I don't want to take that risk any more than I want to drive my car to grandma's house without a spare tire. I mean, I put a spare tire in there, not because I think I'm going to have a flat, but because I want to be prepared. And that's a simplistic you know, metaphor, but we all take certain levels of preparedness like that. But then when it comes to how we live, food, water, money, <laughs> you know, we tend to abdicate everything to you know, our employers and to the government. And what a potentially devastating decision that is. Yeah, and uh, for conservative-minded individuals, and it'd be hard for me to imagine that there's any liberals still listening to my show. I think I've done plenty to <laughs> offend them pretty much uh, at least once a week. So, uh, uh, But for the conservatives, I, th- I think they need to start thinking about migrating away from government jobs, away from corporate jobs, and, and start thinking about – ways that they can start doing their own thing and making their own way. Uh, If you're in corporate America, the term diversity training is not a phrase that's unfamiliar to you. And uh, and you also have to know that the left is not content to just shut you up anymore. Um, They used to be happy if they could just stick you in a corner and, and make you stop uh, spouting off your views, but now they want you to actively uh, punch their card, so to speak, to to validate their version of right and wrong. Um, I guess Kim Davis and 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 Coach Joe Kelly are probably uh, good examples of that. And I don't think they're going to be the last people to have their jobs jeopardized for refusing to go along with the social engineering agenda. Uh, would you agree that an entrepreneur has more freedom to believe what they want to believe and, and teach their and, – and also, uh, while you're on that subject, if you want to get into homeschooling a little bit, uh, more freedom to teach your children what, what the, the values that, that you espouse – well, yeah, of course. I mean, um, you know, I had I come from a background where I had a really nice corporate job. Um, you know, I was president of the division of a marketing services company for 13 years. Um, and I walked away from that because I just felt myself going in a direction that I was going to be, you know, 50, 
60 and making good money but being a slave to a corporation, a slave in the sense that, like the example I talked about before where people make really good money, is what, when you get in that world, it's hard to walk away from it. So, you know, I went down the path of wanting to be freer. That was my, for all of the decisions that I make, they're all anchored in, will this allow me to be more free and have more time with my family and have more time to do the things I want? I never start with a question or even in the first five questions of, can I make money doing this? Or is, will I make a lot of money doing this? That that doesn't matter. You only need money anyway, you know, to buy freedom and you can get freedom for, you know, pretty inexpensively if you go out and take responsibility for your life. So, yeah, I, I think that, you know, the path of freedom is entrepreneurship. I don't think there's ever been a better time to be entrepreneurial because of some of the tools that are available that allow you to work from, from anywhere. You still have to have the same ingenuity and creativity and entrepreneurial spirit that anyone ever had to have to be able to pull that off. But, um, you know, there's opportunities to do that. And as it relates to homeschooling, of course, I mean, we don't follow a curriculum. We're aware of all the curriculums out there. There's homeschoolers that uh, don't do anything. They're completely hands off. There's other homeschoolers that go the other way and put their kids in uniforms and, you know, teach a very strict curriculum. You know, our curriculum often for our daughter is we're going to go outside and, you know, we're going to we're going to kill a chicken for dinner and we're going to see where this meat comes from and then we're going to count the chickens and that's how we do four-year-old math. And, um, you know, we're going to go out there and grab... Yeah, some mushrooms. You can eat these. You can't eat these. You can pick up this dandelion and eat it, but you can't. um, You don't eat these nettles here because (laughs) your hands are going to hurt. So you know, there's a lot of things that we will focus on teaching that a lot of a lot of homesteaders will focus on teaching children that you would never find in a curriculum. And conversely, there's a lot of things in their curriculum. um, You know that you know that we would never teach, you know, our, our, our child. And there's a lot of testing requirements and there's a lot of wasted time between classes and things that you know, just make no sense, you know, when you think the way we do. And then, uh, to, to go back to the, the thought of, uh, starting to migrate away from government jobs. Um, we've really blown past constitutional barriers in, in our country. And I think that we're racing towards more and more violations in, in the future. Um, so let's take a police officer for an example. Um, let's say he's got two kids in college. He's just refinanced his home. He's buried in debt. And now let's take another officer and he's built a side business. He's taught his children the, the value of entrepreneurship by getting them involved in the business. He's lived below his means and his, uh, his whole life and his, his house is paid off. Now, let's say both of these officers believe in the Constitution, but they're both asked by their department to violate it by performing a warrantless search. Um, who's in the better position to obey their conscience and turn in their badge? Well, officer number one is stuck. And, you know, officer number one is like a lot of people, whether officers or not, because they are they're completely dependent on a lifeline, um, you know, in terms of a paycheck. But what that officer is banking on also is a pension. And, you know, there's a big problem with pensions and funding of pensions. And we all are operating under the belief or all of these people are operating under the belief that, well, I'll work for the 30 years and the pension will be there, you know, and um <laughs> There's quite it's quite possible there'll be an economic reset where that's not going to happen. So officer number two not only can follow his or her moral compass, but officer number two is in a position to go, well, that would have been nice to have that pension, but the fact that it's not here, eh, it's okay. And then uh, while we're talking about personal finance, if you're thinking about Doing what you did, unplugging, getting off the grid, going, uh, t- being a, a modern homesteader. Do you need to already have all of these these budgeting skills in place before you go buy the farm, or is that something that you can develop along the way? Um, you can develop some of the skills along the way, but um, it certainly helps if you have. I mean, I get the question a lot of times: How do you afford to do this? And the answer to those questions are, you know, are very simple. Either you've earned it in a prior life, you have career equity or you have to go do it on the cheap. And I think sometimes people are looking for a magic solution or they want to crowdfund somebody to pay for their homestead or something like that. And that's just ridiculous. That's not going to happen. So either you've earned money in your life, um, 
let's take the example of the people I, I said before that were making a lot of money but spending it on multiple homes and boats and toys and things like that. What if you made decent money, you know, not $500,000 a year, but maybe you make $60,000 a year, but you live like you make $25,000 a year. You know, there's a lot of people that follow, you know, very limited spending concepts like early retirement, extreme type of, you know, spending behaviors, minimalism. So you're one of those people and you bank the extra money that you were making and that allows you to buy a little piece of land. You can put a, um, a you know, a modular home on that land. You can put a camper on that land. You can put a tiny home on that land. You can build or whatever it is, but, but you can find a way to do that. But what there isn't is a magic answer for the people who have been living uh, beyond their means and they've incurred a lot of debt. And so they've been financing everything, what, not just cars and houses, but you know furniture and everything else and credit cards and everything else. And now they're saying, I don't want to be in this situation. Um, I need to go out. I'd like to find a way to go out and live you know, self-sufficiently. Well, you've got to get out of your debt. I mean, that, that's your responsibility, and there's no simple way to get away from that. So, um, it, you know, it depends on the person and the situation. You can learn a lot about the budgeting and how to create a farm business. But if you get into farming, farming is expensive because you're not going to farm without land. Um, you can farm. You don't have to do what we did, which is, you know, animal farming, livestock farming. You can get a quarter of an acre, half an acre, and do market farming. And some people make a really good income just growing vegetables or flowers, uh, you know, for a farmer's market. But, um, you know, you have to start with your assessment and uh, do an assessment of what your resources are and come up with a plan for yourself. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Katie Armour offers affordable body armor, including level three trauma plates made of AR-500 steel. They can endure multiple rounds from pistols and rifles up to 7.62 NATO. Order today from katiearmor.com. That's C-A-T-I armor.com. Following a crippling EMP attack against the USA, college student turned survivalist Danny Walker finally makes it to his secure rural location. No sooner does Danny arrive than he is given another petrifying prophetic vision of the chaos still to come. The country has been brought to its knees and the thin veneer of civility has been torn to shreds by the savagery lurking just below the surface. Danny has survived the EMP, but will he live through the most vicious era in U.S. history? By Ichabod, book two of Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt. From Amazon.com today in Kindle, paperback, or audio edition. Is this completely binary, this choice of being self-sufficient or not? Or are there different grades of, for for some folks may think that, uh, okay, I, I, I don't, have to completely unplug, but I'd like to be less dependent on the system. And, and, uh, what are your thoughts on that? It's not binary at all for the, there, let's, let's take the people who don't want to be as crazy as I am or as you are. And, you know, or at least from their point of view, and they've got good jobs living in the city, but they'd like to do a little bit of this. Well, why don't you take a step from living in a city apartment to go get an acre out in suburbia? Okay. Just an acre. And on your acre, Put a fence up, not because you don't want to see your neighbors, but because the fence will allow you to keep some small livestock in like goats. And on the fence, you can actually grow things like grape. So go ahead immediately and start planting your long-term stuff. Plant your fruit trees right away. Plant uh, dwarf fruit trees because you've got a small parcel of land. You know, get yourself a few chickens. Get meat rabbits. Rabbits produce very quickly. You're In 12 weeks, you're going to be harvesting uh, rabbit meat, so you're already producing some of your protein. And you're living a homestead life, and you're going to feel like a homesteader, Mark, if you do that on an acre in suburbia. Even though you can see a whole bunch of houses, you are going to feel like you're a homesteader. But the difference is, is if, as they say, the Schumer hits the fan and things go down, you are going to be very visible around pe- with people around you who know what you're doing, who see what you're doing, and – You know, if you're the kind of person that worries about that kind of scenario, you're going to wish you had gone farther away. So I'm not saying people should do that. I'm just saying that that's the difference. So in in our case, we we weren't comfortable with that. We wanted to be farther away where we we don't see people, where it's very common to hear guns 
uh, being shot, not because we live in downtown L.A., but because people around here get out their rifles and their pistols and we're always shooting, and they're all, they, have, they have good marksmanship skills, and that's a you know, pretty normal sound for us. And that's actually, ironically, a comforting sound for us. And you've written a book or two in the vein of homesteading and entrepreneurship. Is that right? Well, yeah, uh, my uh, last two books, um, was I mentioned Start Prepping. Before that, I wrote How to Make Money Homesteading, which is um, um, yeah, a book that sells really well. It gives a lot of ideas about how you can find ways to make money, what enterprises you can pursue if you want to make money either as a homesteader or um, as someone who lives more self-sufficiently. And in that book, I was able to profile um, 18 people uh, who are across the country who are doing various things to make a living um, in, in what you would call a modern homesteading fashion. Uh, yeah, prior to that, I wrote a, it was basically a memoir. It wasn't a how-to book. It was a, a book about our journey of how we actually got out of the rat race to that life of farming, and it was called The Accidental Farmers. Um, and that's just a story. Uh, it's not going to teach you anything about how to farm or how not to farm. It's going to tell you, wow, what happened, what we found when we actually you know, took that leap and um, went out to the country and started farming for the first time. Then you've got a a free ebook on your site. It's called the the self sufficient roadmap. Can you can you give us a, sort of the the overview of of what that's about? I think that's a really helpful tool for a lot of people. Um, what I I wrote that um, free guide because there are a lot of people that, as I mentioned, want to leave what they're doing and go become more self sufficient in their life, but income is is a barrier for a lot of people. They're always asking the question. Uh, how do I afford it? What can I do? So what I did was I created um, um, a, a template uh, that I call HELP, a Homestead Entrepreneurial Life Plan. And it, it takes them through a series of questions that they ask themselves about their dreams, their aspirations, their obstacles, what's standing in their way, what are the barriers, uh, the assets they have, not just money, but what other kinds of um, intangible assets they have that can help them on their journey. And then I ask them questions in there or have, have them ask themselves questions about what are their skills? What kind of business can they produce? What are their goals for income? Do they want to make a lot of money? Because some people want to go out. I know people, Mark, that are living this homestead life, making a lot of money, several hundred thousand dollars a year. I know people that are, that are trying to live on and want to live on ten or $15,000 a year. It's different for everyone. So this is just a tool that they can download. It's in a PDF format, and um, it helps them to answer those questions and get started on their journey. And then, so that's very personalized. It's not, it's not, here's what I did and you have to do exactly what I did or you're going to fail. It's got nothing to do with me. In fact, I don't, I don't even know if my name's mentioned in there other than here, here, I wrote this book for you or this guide for you. Um, it's all about them. And, um, you know, because what I did means nothing. I mean, if they want to know what I did, they can read some books I've written and, or they can follow the path I've done. But, um, it's all, of, my situation was different. My goals are different. My, um, skills and my uh, assets and my limitations, they're all different than someone else. The real question is, what are they doing now? What do they want to be doing? Why do they want to do it? Why are they stuck where they are? How do we get them over that hurdle to get started on their their journey to preparedness, if you will, their journey to self-sufficiency? And then what's the vision for their life when they get there? I mean, do they maybe they want to be farming. Uh, so there's a lot of farming enterprises I walk through in my books and in that guide. Or maybe they want to – there's some people that have gone to the country and said, you know, but I'm really good at marketing. So they want to be online marketers, and they do online courses or those kind of things. Or look at yourself, Mark. I mean, you're, you know, you're an outstanding author. So there are people that have a passion for writing, and they want to write. Um, and, you know, this wasn't really as easy 15 years ago before Kindle – and before ACX and you know Audible changed everything, now if you've got the skills not just to write but the skills to build a platform of people that will be interested in what you have to say, you can go out you know and live a self-sufficient life and make income solely on writing. And then you, uh, how how do folks get that book? Because I think that you've just got a lot of folks uh, very interested right now. Um, how did how do they get that? Yeah, they can just go to uh, selfsufficientman.com, and you'll see it right there in the sidebar, or, or you could go to selfsufficientman.com slash roadmap, uh, and you, you can't miss it. It's a, it's a, it's a free download. I'll, I'll always keep it up there because a lot of people grab it, and uh, it seems to be helpful to them. And I think for a lot of folks, I think that 
there's a there's a big mental shift that has to happen to come out of that that uh, I'm an you you got to get out of that employee mindset to do something like this and and I think something like like what you're talking about here the self sufficient roadmap I think that's going to be a really good tool to to start turning your mind and and uh, you know paradigms are sort of like big cruise ships and these things don't get turned around on a dime you know it takes a little while to get them to get them uh, repositioned. Um, it sounds to me also like your new podcast is also also going to be another tool that's going to help uh, shift the course, so to speak. Is is that correct? Yeah, because I think we all need inspiration. You see, if, Mark, it, why, why would somebody want to change their life? Let's let's take most people. I mean, the overwhelming majority of people we both know this are driving to work today. They're sitting in a cubicle or something like that, a small office or or doing some kind of you know normal job, um, they're shopping at Walmart. Uh, they're buying you know the cheapest food that they can because that's what our our society allows us to do. We're living paycheck to paycheck. So people are we're all products of this environment. None of us, you know, in the when we were kids, made a conscious choice that I'm going to go do this. We just evolved in this world. So if you're going to make a choice to change that. I mean, it's very difficult. I mean, very difficult for someone to make that choice. So I think one of two things has to be present for you to make that choice. You either have to become very afraid. I mean, really trembling afraid. Or you have to become super, super inspired. One of those two things has to happen. I mean, the inspiration is I just have such a dream and such a passion for something I want to do. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to leave all this behind because I am so inspired by this. Or I am so afraid that the world's going to collapse or I'm going to lose my job or something terrible is going to happen. If I don't do this, then that's driving me. So in my case, um, I, I'm not in the fear business. I mean, there's, if, if people want to be afraid, all they have to do is watch the news and open their eyes. For me, what, I, what I'm hoping to do is provide at least a little bit, a snippet of inspiration. And... Um, you know, it, it would be it wouldn't be inspiring to people if I did a podcast about myself because that's you know you heard one episode you heard them all. Um, but if I can do stories of other people and share the stories, and my first episode is you know a couple that was in New York City and they had great incomes, investment banker, fashion designer, uh, doing you know making good money, had a great life, but weren't living their dream life. They like a lot of people were living week to week, so they decided that. They wanted to leave right then before they had kids, before they got sucked into that trap and go out and become farmers. And that's what they did. And it was a great story. I've got stories of other people who have done the same thing, different different stories, but left other cities or other typical jobs. And they have found a way. Some of these people found a way within a year to have great success. Some people within 25 years, it took them step by step to slowly become more self-sufficient to slowly make more money and to, and to make it work. Um, but they've all done it. They've, they've all opted out of the rat race and they've all found a way to live the life that they dream of and not live someone else's dream. That's fantastic. And it's, it's inspiring just to listen to you talk about it. So I, I can just imagine this is going to be great. <laughs> so, uh, uh, when and where, and how do we find your new podcast? And one more time, where do we get the self-sufficient roadmap? Yeah, so go to selfsufficientman.com uh, for everything. Um, you know, I also have another site which is a, which goes to the same URL, which is the selfsufficientlife.com, uh, because that's the name of the podcast, Self Sufficient Life. And there, every time there's a podcast which comes out every Friday, um, there's a new post you can sign up for it in the RSS feed. I'm not sure when your podcast, when this episode, Mark, will air, but the podcast starts September 16th, 2016, and of course you can subscribe on iTunes and uh, uh, keep up with it there. Tim, thanks for making time for us today. My pleasure, Mark, always. If you're near Cincinnati, start making plans to come see me at the Cincy Preparedness Expo at the Sharonville Convention Center on October 15th and 16th. Besides all of the fantastic prepper gear available, it's a great place to learn vital survival skills. And make sure you stop by the Prepper Recon booth to say hi. Check out CincyPreparednessExpo.com for tickets and information.